Guys, big, big day today. We're finally gonna do major drastic stuff in this abandoned house. And you might think like, well, you did the kitchen, you did the bathroom. No, no, no. Right now, it still looks like a piece of crap inside. Cause you got stuff like this, the windows are Disgusting. These are all kind of custom made. This is a single panel glass that they put trim on both sides to hold it in place. It's so janky. The door is stupid. I can't make this look good because it's kind of all falling apart. Uh, it's nuts. So we're gonna rip this out, create a big open cavity, and install a nice modern sliding door for this dining room. This is gonna be great. Let's get to work. Look at all this water damage. This is just little old particle board sipping over here. Water probably built up here, started soaking it all through. That's not what we're looking for, but it's also definitely on brand for this house. See, what did I say? Just a single piece of glass that are, that's secured with silicone and some trim. That can't keep anything warm. Opening for a sliding door, 60 inches wide, uh, 80 inches tall. Most doors are 80 inches tall, and we are right on the money for 80 inches. So we're looking good. I'm gonna throw in a jack stud, a king stud on both sides, support this header. Fortunately, this header stretches really far, so I didn't have to prop anything up. Throw those puppies up there, and I think we'll be able to actually start dry fitting our door. I think I spoke too soon about jack studs and kick studs because technically the jack and king studs are on the outside. So these are, I would say, another jack stud that's gone to the header all the way to the top. Maybe it's a king stud, I don't know, but I got two of them racked up, nice and solid. Before we could bring our sliding door in, I gotta cover this with OSB because it has to be the right thickness in order to stay with the same plane in this area. So OSB coming up. This is so sweet. I love the fact that I got it centered right with the slide because most dining rooms that I've ever had in my life, the freaking light is like right here, like 24 inches away from the center of the dining table. So here, center the door, center the dining room light, the dining table gets centered, it's perfect. Everything has symmetry. You gotta see this. The Haro Smart Toilet is the coolest toilet I've ever had. Now this is the T05 series. Installation could not have been easier. It's literally just goes right over where your existing toilet phalange is with the addition to these little mounting blocks that just get anchored right in place and then screwed from the side. By the way, this little feature right there is my favorite feature. That's a kick control. It has two functions. One, when you kick it, it lifts the toilet seat. So no more picking up with your hand and your wife can't get mad. And at the same time, you kick it to flush the toilet as well.
And just when you thought it couldn't get any cooler than that, it has an auto flush system. So when you're done using front or rear wash, it recognizes that, flushes it, and once you get up, it just simply closes the lid for you. There's so many awesome features on it. Like it has the nightlight in there, the UV nozzle sterilization. It has an auto detection within a three foot radius. The lid opens. It's got the heated seat in there, which is my favorite, the heated water. It's got an awesome control settings that even has what I love, the massage mode right there. If you've never used a bidet or a smart toilet bidet or anything like that, it will change your life. With this remote control, there's every setting you could ever imagine wanting. Heated seat, heated water. It's got a massage mode on there, pressure regulation. It's got everything that you might ever want and need from a smart toilet all here. With the Haro Smart Toilet, the hands-free option makes it super convenient to never touch a toilet ever again. And the best part, it's luxury for less. You won't be breaking the bank on convenience for yourself. In fact, they have a 20% discount going on on Easter, so that's something you definitely should take advantage of. Now, in the meantime, let's get back into this video. I gotta throw some of this insulation here and then throw some drywall and this puppy will be done. It's absolutely incredible how just a sliding door upgraded from a 60 year old, God knows what kind of door that was, hodgepodge of a door, transforms the entire space. This, this makes me not regret buying this house. Now we're gonna stay on topic, window door stuff. Come with me, I wanna show you something. So yes, single pane, stupid window. I mean, this is fragile as I'll get out. Uh, we gotta redo this. Um, as you can see, there's no trim, there's no window sills, there's nothing. So this makes it a very boring, ugly window. Now, I will order the windows, they're coming. I'm just doing a few at a time because they're expensive. So please buy my merch, help me pay for new windows. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna rip out this window sill that's been beat up to crap. Uh, take that out and we're gonna start building a new window sill. Uh, we're gonna build a casing for it and then we're gonna beef it up with some nice thick trim that will, I think, elongate the ceilings a little bit, being, you know, seven foot tall ceilings that we need any inch we can get. Any inch we can get. <laughs> inch and a half off. I must be smoking something. What do you think? Not bad, huh? It did exactly what I wanted. It just kind of stretched out the window. I do wish I had a nicer window to showcase this off because it kind of looks like 50%, man. But uh, I know it's coming. It's coming all right. I got what? One, two, three, four, five more windows to do. So I got to speed this pace up.
Window trim is all up with the casings. We got three new interior pre-hung doors. This is the same one we use, the same style we use for the bathroom. Only issue is 80 foot tall ceilings is what, or rough openings is what traditionally doors are. Uh, I got to trim them down to 79. It's the only way it'll fit, again, low ceilings. So trim them up, hang them up, and then trim them out again. I think I'm getting the hang of this whole door hanging fiasco. One down, two more to go. Got all three doors done. This is incredible. This looks so much nicer. And the reason I replaced them is because 60 year old doors, they're just these weird old church-like bathroom doors where it's just a single panel, half of it's all chipping away, no character to it. This is freaking awesome. Now, let's start trimming them all around so this hallway can really start coming together. Yeah, talk about coming full circle on a project. We started with this big sliding door and we finished trimming it off, right? That's incredible. What a storytelling man I am. Gather around kids, let me tell you a fable. This is all done. I gotta brad nail all my brad nail holes. I gotta caulk this son of a gun, a little bit of sanding, and then we'll shoot all the trim. I think that's a smarter way and more efficient do a nice clean spray on the trim. And then as you can see, I already started texturing a little bit. Uh, so then after it dries, I'll be able to mask off just the trim around and then start spraying the walls. Folks, at the end of this video, you're gonna see how wild this place looks. All right, it's a big day, big things are happening. Trim is caulked, it is uh, wood filled. The holes are filled, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, my strategy is to paint it. And in fact, I'm gonna overshoot this window because your boy finally ordered the windows. Uh, they're not gonna be here for like three to four weeks. So I'm gonna spray it over, which is nice. I don't have to cover anything up. I picked up a new sprayer. This is called the True Coat 360 out of my own pocket. The nice thing about this one is I've used that on previous projects. It's half the cost of the Graco uh, airless sprayer. So the downfall with these ones is the paint shoots out pretty fast. So I have to refill it pretty quickly. So my goal is two coats. Hopefully I'll do the whole house and then come back right around it. Let's party. All right, it's looking really damn good. I'm gonna hit it with one more coat just to be sh safe and sure. I don't know why I can't talk today. I need a break. We're here, folks. The moment we've been waiting for, finally gonna cover up these horrific walls. Uh, they might look a little different for you because we added the texture, the same knockdown texture that we had in the kitchen, so everything is flawless now. And the cool thing about texture is that it gives you a little bit more character as opposed to like a flat fill. What I did here is to figure out how to deal with pre-painted uh, you know, trims, 
is I mask it off and I cut in the outside perimeter, which will allow for me to use like a spray shield and spray away from it. Hopefully I don't shoot myself in the foot, but there's only one way to find out. Let's spray. I mean, I might as well be tearing up here because seeing this piece of crap of a house and turning into something beautiful finally and fresh and crisp, it's like watching your kid grow up, man. It's, this is incredible. I'm so happy, man. I had so many second thoughts on this house, but to see everything actually transform, it's a damn good feeling. All right, guys, four days later, trim's painted, trim is up, walls are painted, and everything's caulked. Check all this out, this is awesome. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. I am so excited how everything's turning out. This house is finally transforming into a whole lot of potential. Make sure you tune in next week where we're gonna start handling the floors and I think this dump is gonna start becoming a home. In the meantime, check out this video. I think you might enjoy it.